Good morning, first graders. I'm going to do a read aloud for you, and I want to make sure, I'm going to try to make sure we can get all the pictures in there. So I'm going to kind of be sitting off to the back here and trying to read it on the computer. Because this book here won an award for having the best pictures in a kid's book for an entire year. So the name of this book is The Relatives Came. And it looks like it's in fiction, right? Because this doesn't have an actual photo. This is a drawing. <clears throat> and it looks like somebody's going on a vacation, right? They got all their luggage up here. So this book is called The Relatives Came by Cynthia Ryland. And the illustrator is a guy named Stephen Gamble. And he won an award for drawing such great pictures. So I'm going to try here. Let's see if I can make it so everybody can see all the pictures. It was in the summer of the year when the relatives came. They came up from Virginia. They left when their grapes were nearly purple enough to pick, but not quite. They had an old station wagon that smelled like a real car, and in it they put an ice chest, which is like a cooler, full of soda pop and some boxes of crackers and some bologna sandwiches, and up they came from Virginia. They left at four in the morning when it was still dark before even the birds were awake. And look, if they look up there in the top corner, they're losing one of their suitcases, aren't they? <clears throat> they drove all day long and into the night. And while they traveled along, they looked at the strange houses in different mountains. And they thought about their almost purple grapes back home. They thought about Virginia. And they thought about us, too, waiting for them. <clears throat> Let's see. So they drank up all their pop, and they ate up all their carcass, and they traveled up all those miles until finally they pulled into our yard. Oh, look, and they drove right into the fence. Oh, and just look at how happy everybody is. Hugs and kisses and handshaking and smiles and laughing and running to meet each other. Then... It was hugging time. Talk about hugging. Those relatives just passed us all around their car, pulling us against their wrinkled Virginia clothes, crying sometimes. They hugged us for hours. They were very happy to see each other. Then it was into the house. And so much laughing and shining faces and hugging in the doorways. You'd have to go through at least four different hugs to get from the kitchen to the front room. Those relatives. Must have, must, maybe they hadn't seen each other in a long time. And finally, after a big supper, two or three times around until we all got a turn at the table, there was a quiet talk, and we were in twos and threes through the house. Look they got all the, oh, look at the baby dumping stuff on the table. <clears throat> oh, now it's sleeping time. Look at how everybody's sleeping. They're sharing beds. They're sharing the floor. The dog's even there. The relatives weren't particular about beds, which was good since there weren't any extras. So a few squeezed in with us, and then the rest slept on the floor, some with their arms thrown over the closest person, or some with an arm across one person and a leg across another. It was different going to sleep with all that new breathing in the house. Is everybody having fun? Somebody's digging a hole up there, let's see. They're getting playing cars. Oh, somebody's even getting a haircut. The relatives stayed for weeks and weeks. They helped us tend the garden, and they fixed any broken things that they could find. That's very nice of them. Here they are, repairing the fence, playing some music. I love it. The banjo and the fiddle and the stand-up bass. They ate all of our strawberries and melons, and then promised we could eat all of their grapes and peaches when we came to Virginia. Look at all those people. But none of us thought about Virginia. We were just so busy hugging and eating and breathing together. Oh, finally, after a long time, the relatives loaded up their ice chest and headed back to Virginia at four in the morning. We stood there in our pajamas and waved them off in the dark. We watched the relatives disappear down the road. Then we crawled back into our beds. That felt too big and much too quiet. We all fell asleep. And the relatives drove on all day long and into the night. 
and while they traveled along, they looked at the strange houses in different mountains, and they thought about their dark purple grapes waiting for them at home in Virginia. But they thought about us, too, missing them, and they missed us. And when they were finally home in Virginia, they crawled into their silent, soft beds and dreamed about next summer. And look, there are the purple grapes all ready to be picked. All right. So that was just a nice story about going on a trip and visiting family because it was about our relatives. So let's talk about some of the things that we've been talking about. I'm going to cover this up first. The name of our book was The Relatives Came. Let's talk about some of the characters in there. I'm going to give you a chance to think about this. So reach up and pause the video and talk to your grown-up or talk to the person that you're sitting with and think about some of the characters that you saw. Because I don't, don't think we had any names or anything, but there were different types of people right there. We saw some little kids. We saw some babies. We saw some dogs. We saw some grandparents and some aunts and uncles. So let's next, we can pause it and talk about the setting. Now, there were a few places that were mentioned. So I want you to reach up again and pause this video and turn to whoever you're sitting with or just think about this yourself and think about some of the places where all the action took place, where the people were, where they were doing things, when they were driving. Go ahead. And now finally, well, let's see. Some of the settings were Virginia, right? Because they were leaving Virginia. And then it was in the car. They had uh, definitely a lot of action happened in the car. And then all the action that happened at their house when they were all sleeping in different rooms and playing outside and fixing things. So they were outside, they were inside, they were in the living room, they were in the bedroom. And so last but not least, let's talk about the beginning, the middle, and the end of the story. All right, so think about this. We've been talking about stories and having a good beginning and a good middle and a good end. So think about some of the things. Take a second and pause the video. And think about what happened in the beginning, the middle, and the end of the story. Well, there you have it. You know, in the beginning, they got ready to leave, and they hopped in their car. The middle was the, the drive, and then the whole time together when they were at their family's house. And then at the end, everybody went home, right? Life got back to normal. All right, good to see you all. I hope you're doing okay with the new schedule. And uh, we will be checking in from time to time. I think we're going to have some Zoom meetings set up so everybody can see each other. So keep working hard, keep doing your best, keep trying to keep your grown-ups happy, and uh, we'll see you all soon.